Welcome to Spain for Jaguar's pre-season testing, more precisely the circuit of Calafat, which is about an hour and a half south of Barcelona. And this season, it's playing host to the all-electric launch of Jaguar's new Formula E season, which kicks off on the 16th of January in the Chilean capital city of Santiago. Next year's winner will become the first ever Formula E world champion. And in the next half an hour, we'll be speaking to Jaguar's new driver lineup, who are currently out on circuit testing. We'll also be unveiling their brand new iType 5 race car, and we'll be getting you up to speed with everything you need to know ahead of the upcoming season. Now normally for a launch we'd be in a packed room full of media, guests and sponsors but this year for obvious reasons we're going to have to do something a little different. So we're making use of this private behind closed doors test to give you some exclusive access. So the team are hard at work putting the kilometres on the Season 7 car but before we get going with Season 7 let's take a look back at the highlights of Season 6 which once again saw Jaguar on the top step of the podium. This year we said it was about more points, more podiums and more wins and again, we're right on schedule. My biggest motivation is winning, 100%. Ready to check front position, let it clear. All five lights are on! And we go green in Diria, Santiago, Mexico City, Marrakesh, and we go green in Berlin. Here comes Evans, it's pole position! Jaguar take their second career pole. Yes! P1, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing! Well done guys. Evans carving his way up the order. To recover from 24th on the grid to P6 was huge. The most that anyone's gained in a, in a Formula E race. Energy, 2950, copy. Starting the final lap now. Bring it home. And we go green in Mexico City. And is this the place that Mitch Evans really launches himself into being a championship contender? One of the most dominant races in the history of the championship. Mitch Evans wins in Mexico City. Yes. Yes! This is how it's bad, mate. Superb drive. Yes, guys. You guys know that. Everyone that's involved in, in the team is playing a huge role. To reward them with victory is, is honestly the best feeling you could ever imagine. For me, it's just a really proud moment for the team. We've shown real speed and pace with the car this year and put ourselves into true championship contending performance. We'll come back even stronger next year. So we're going to get things started today by talking to two men who are leading the charge into next season. They've been on the all-electric journey since the very beginning. It is the driver and team director combination of Mitch Evans and James Barkley. And Mitch, we'll start with you. We saw the highlights there of last year. What, what stands out in your memory from season six? There's a few um, really cool memories. I would say the, the pole in Santiago was one, um, but then afterwards in Mexico, the, that quite dominant victory, um, quite convincing win, which doesn't really happen in Formula E. Um, it was nice to really show them what we've got. And uh, obviously the comeback as well in, in, in Marrakesh was, was quite, a, quite a cool race. Not really the circumstance that we wanted, but it was still a highlight. So um, yeah, those three, but obviously Mexico probably, probably takes it. It was, a, it, was a, it was a really cool day. And Mitch, of course, it's been about three months since you were last in a competitive racing car. You must be itching to get back in the seat. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm going like a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to getting into the car in, in Valencia. And then obviously, uh, you know, Santiago is actually not far away as well. Just, just a lot of excitement. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of R&D that's gone into this new, new car. Um, a huge testament to, to the whole design team back at the factory. Um, just a huge push to try and improve things and, and, and keep it moving forward because we know the other teams are not, are not standing still. So, so far everything looks positive and, and we're hitting our targets, which is, which is the main thing. And talking of those other teams, James, even more manufacturers joined Formula E last year, probably the most competitive season in the championship's history. How do you feel Jaguar fared overall? Yeah, as you say, it was a really exciting year. And I think, you know, on reflection, I'm really proud of the team. It was a season of two halves. You know, we had a, a fantastic start to the season and formally yet again provided that incredibly close 
incredibly unpredictable racing and we were looking forward to to really kind of if you like pushing for the driver drivers championship and maybe a top three in the team's championship so although we didn't have the finish of the season we we wanted i think it just shows how capable we are as a team and yeah hopefully we can have a, a really clear season this year where we can start again like we like we started last season and and continue that momentum we're, that we're capable of are there things you learned from berlin that you can take into because that was six races behind closed doors chile is going to be two behind closed doors are there lessons you can learn from that yeah, there's lots of lessons. I think, you know, we had less people at the event, so it made it very focused. We, we learned a lot through that process. We'll take the learnings, and now it's about moving forward and doing things that we did, as well as the learnings that we had from last season to, to start out season seven as we, as we started last season. James mentioned it was a season of two halves. You went into Berlin in a really strong position, second in the championship, and it all just seemed to fall through your fingers, didn't it? It must yeah, have been done. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a really tough, tough few races, obviously, and also afterwards, you know, just the aftermath of Berlin was was tough to accept. You know, the, how how much we came together that during that week to try and solve answers and just find little bits of improvement in performance was was really impressive to see, and that's obviously given us a massive boost of motivation, um, you know, coming into the season. So, uh, yeah, it, it hurts, but hopefully, you know, it's only going to make us stronger and, and and faster on track. And of course, we're here in Califat on the eve of all the teams coming together in Valencia. How has general testing been going ahead of the next season? Yeah, it's been busy. It's a whole new powertrain and with that comes a lot of work. You're yeah, really excited and, and we we'll have to wait and see with where we stack up in the next few months. Well, we'll be finding out all about the iType 5 a little bit later on. We'll be speaking to the technical manager, Phil Charles, all about it. But first, let's meet the other racing driver for this season that'll be partnering Mitch for the first time. We can speak to him as a Jaguar racing driver. Well, welcome to Jaguar Racing, Sam Bird. Sam, you've won races in every Formula E season, nine FE wins under your belt. No pressure, right? <laughs> come, come Chile on the 16th of January. Look, there's, there's 24 world-class drivers out there and it's going to be extremely tough. We believe in the work that we've been doing behind the scenes. Obviously, I've been pounding around this morning, getting more miles under my belt, but um, I have a fantastic teammate. I have a great crew behind me. It's a move that has been years in the making, actually. I've been speaking to, to Jaguar, James, and, and the top brass there for a long time now, and I just felt like the timing was right. Uh, I think this is the perfect time to come to Jaguar Racing. It's a team with a lot of momentum going forward. So I've seen them grow from season three, their first year in Formula E. Um, every year they get more and more competitive. Watching Mitch last year really uh, take it to, to everybody, really, and we'll go to Santiago and give it absolutely everything. Now, Sam, many people think of teammates as being rivals within a team, but of course, when that relationship works well, you can actually learn a lot from each other. Yeah. You've been very complimentary so far about Mitch. So what do you think you're actually going to learn from him? Um, a lot, actually. I really have learned a lot already. I think his, his feedback is amazing. Of all, the, of all the drivers that I've worked with so far, his feedback is so intricate, so detailed. Um, he's not bad in the car either, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He's pretty good. He's shown me a lot of things so far. So. No, we're, we're going to work extremely closely, I think. We're, we're going to take this car and make it faster and faster all the time. The fact that we're both competitive as well is just going to push us, hopefully, closer and closer towards the top of that championship. And Mitch, what do you think you're going to learn from Sam? Uh, I mean, there's just a massive list because obviously his stats speak for themselves. You know, the wins, the runner-ups I'm sorry to say but yeah <laughs> but I mean you know he, he's almost won the championship a few times um, you know one of the most successful and, and experienced guys in Formula E so to have have someone of, of Sam's caliber come into the team he, he's literally the last piece of the puzzle that we need to, to really elevate this this team so um, yeah I think it's better to have him as a teammate than a than a rival because <laughs> um, when you see Sam in your mirrors you're, you're definitely a bit worried so um, so correct me if I'm wrong by my calculations you've stood on a podium together once in your whole careers. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, in Monaco? Yeah. In GP, yeah. GP2. GP2. Yeah, How have we that? not done that? How have we managed to avoid each other? <laughs> well, because sometimes you don't avoid each other. Yeah. A year ago, we were in Diria. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch has apologised for that, so it's fine. <laughs> James, a lot of the media are also looking at the 
Jaguar driver lineup, saying that this is possibly one of the strongest combos ever. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really pleased. Having two drivers that are capable of fighting for, for podiums at every race is not something we, we've had, you know. So Mitch has been an absolute star of the championship, but having that second car that's capable of doing that, we haven't had. So for us, this kind of completes the jigsaw puzzle. It's a really important step for us. Uh, and as Sam said, you know, we've been talking for, for a while now and, um, you know, we felt he was the perfect fit for us. The attitude, the never say never attitude, you know, he just wants to go out and race and he's a real racer. And that's kind of something which, which we value. You know, we've, we've seen that with him. His overtaking moves are, are pretty, you know, legendary and formally already. Um, and, and we love that attitude because we felt he would be yeah, the ideal fit for us. So it's actually a really exciting time for us. We start the season knowing we have, you know, an incredibly strong driver lineup, two drivers. If we give them the right car, they can go and deliver results. And that's, that's very exciting. Well, we're about to reveal the iType 5 in a couple of moments' time. James, just a, a word on this Season 7 machine. Yeah, so our, our fifth all-new car for, for Formula E. Uh, we've introduced a new powertrain every year since we started the championship, and uh, we felt this year was no difference. You know, we, we had an early season advantage, I think, in the car last year. Um, but as, as Mitch said, no one stands still. And our view is we had to uh, introduce um, the new powertrain, the new car, and the iType 5, again, is our next evolution of our philosophy of what we think it takes to, to go and win races in, in Formula E. And so further step in terms of performance um, and we, uh, both in terms of how we reduce center of gravity, how we reduce the weight, how we improve the efficiency. Um, and yeah, really proud of what the team have done, especially during the kind of the COVID pandemic, how, you know, how difficult that is to kind of maintain a, a development path, but we've done it and uh, we're looking forward to introducing the new car and showing you later. Well, let's take a look, shall we? This is the car that Sam and Mitch will be driving when the season gets underway on the 16th of January in Santiago. This is the Jaguar Racing iType 5, one of the most technologically advanced cars in the world. So this is the new Jaguar Racing i-Type 5 and Sam and I have been joined by Phil Charles who's the technical manager at Jaguar Racing who's been spearheading the project. Phil, here it is. It must be a satisfying day for you. Tell us what goes into the development of a car like this. Hi Jack. Yeah, so we're really obviously very proud of the car that we've, we've put together today. You start with a race winning car last year. You go back to the drawing board, you analyse your competitors, see where they're better than you really get, get your head stuck into how you can make your car better. Some teams aren't starting the season with a, with a brand new powertrain. You guys are. How tough has that been in, with the recent months and the, and the global pandemic to get done? It is tough and the last few months have, have been difficult to get the tests in that you want to do at the time you want to do. So you've had to plan carefully. Logistically it's been, been quite tricky but um, we got in there quite early. We, we got our powertrain to the track early and that gave us a bit of scope to, to do the work we wanted to do and then you just have to work around it. And, Fortunately, our guys and girls back in the factory worked really hard there and, and we've, we've managed to put it together in time. So I'm um, really, really proud with the job that they've done. Is it difficult to learn lessons from season six when it, when it was such a strong package? It's really actually very easy to learn lessons. You can, you can see when you win races, that's actually the, the day where it's, it's quite tricky to learn. But the, the other days where you're, where you're one or two tenths off somebody else, that's where you really learn. And there were a couple of times last year that were good references for us. <laughs> you look in the GPS, so you can see some of the other people's data where their speed traces compare or are different to your own uh, and you go away, look in the simulation, work out how to make your cells better in those areas and that's where you really focus and, and go forward. And how's it going to work this year operationally with, with fewer staff at races? That's going to be really tricky, really, really tricky. We're really at the point now where everybody's hands are, are on deck. On the days when it's all going well, it'll be okay, but if you have a little problem here or there, it'll be tricky. But you have been uh, testing this, this new car in some of the finest British weather. Uh, it must be nice to get a bit of dry running here in, in Spain and, and get to grips with a, a new, totally new car for you. It is, Jack. It's, it's great to get some, uh, some proper dry running done out here in Spain, um, you know, to, to make me feel comfortable. But to be honest, I felt confident uh, and comfortable from, from day one. Uh, working with Phil and the boys back at headquarters, they've made me feel right at home. I'm sure we're going to have a great year together. Well, there's a fascinating insight into the development of this iType 5. Let's go catch up with Amanda, who's with James Barkley. So thanks, Jack. Yes, James, here it is. The car is revealed. I have to say, the livery does look beautiful. And what's wonderful to see is we've got some existing partners who are coming back uh, and we've got some new names on there as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. This is a team sport and our partners are really a critical part of that as well. So very proud that we've extended our partnerships with GKM, Visman and Castrol uh, and also Alpine Stars uh, and Driver who joined us as a new partner this year. So really excited with those, act those activities and those partners. But positively today we also announced that Dow join us as a significant team partner. We're working with their mobility science platform. So we're going to be developing new technologies with them. They're going to help us go faster and hopefully learn a lot for their engagement with us informally. Well now we're going to transport to Gaydon, to the design studio there, because the team aren't just responsible for designing the livery of the car. This year Mitch and Sam are actually trialling something completely new, a new seat covering, and they're going to tell us a bit more about it. We're here in the Jaguar design studio where we really look at the very latest technologies. In the studio, we start off with the design team sketching pen and paper or digitally. Then what we do, we analyse it, we have lots of reviews and then we will mill some full-size clay models of future cars. And it's designers and modellers working together to create the very best Jaguars. Electrification is very, very important to Jaguar. We started the journey with the I-PACE, which has had dozens of awards globally. And now all of the PACE family is electrified in some way. My team are responsible for the creation and the execution of all interior and exterior materials. Type Fibre is a system of premium leather-free performance materials, engineered reinventing our legacy of racing fabrics. The prefix type is a clear reference to our famous type models, such as the C and the D, and the fibre is the technology of the materials, common in their innovative approach and methods of manufacture, designed for better performance to drive weight and waste production. We're really fortunate that we're able to use Sam Bird and Mitch Evans in testing to test materials to the extreme, ensuring that materials are then fit for purpose in our road car production vehicles. We work really closely with the Formula E team. We put a lot of effort into the livery of the racing cars. All of our graphic lines are meant to give a sense of speed and performance that's really at the heart of everything to do with Jaguar. We use our Jaguar Racing Blue colour that we've developed over the years and we want that longevity and that timeless peel of that colour. There's been racing in, in Jaguar's bloodline throughout its history. And I'm really pleased that you know, we're in Formula E racing because it just continues that journey of Jaguar racing. Being part of the world's first carbon neutral race series supports our destination zero mission. So Mitch, here it is, an example of this type fibre seating. You're obviously feeding back on it, but just tell me about a bit more about it. Yeah, well obviously these, these uh, seats are scanned to our body, so we're obviously nice and secure, but also comfortable. This is the combination I've gone for. Um, very cool, looks, looks great and uh, obviously very comfortable and just a great place to obviously test these products out to, in the most extreme environments. Now you must be used to feeding back on what the car is up to. Have you ever actually had to do anything like this before and what kind of feedback do you give? No, this is new territory for me. Obviously I, I give feedback on my seat quite often from the shape but in terms of material it's, it's been a new experience which has been quite, quite exciting. There's, there's a range of different materials to choose from um, and I've, I've, I've chosen this, this combination. Um, so yeah, quite, uh, quite unique, but um, hopefully it's just going to be you know, a huge benefit for, for the consumers in the long run. Brilliant stuff. Well, we're nearly at the end of our Season 7 launch, but before we go, we have to pay a quick visit to Stuttgart, to a key member of the team who sadly can't be with us at the moment because of travel restrictions. It's over to our chairman, Gert Moiser. We are very proud to be the first premium manufacturer that joined the championship and think this is an important and exciting step for FIA Formula E. As the world continues to electrify, so does the importance of Formula E as the world's first and only electric world championship. Formula E brings to life the essence of Jaguar and what we stand for, including our electrifying performance and inspiring innovation as we continue to electrify our range of Jaguar cars. Racing is core. It is a fundamental part of our DNA and has been since 1950 and our legendary racing Jaguars from the past. Our race to innovate philosophy continues today as we learn, develop and realize our leading electrification know-how and technologies that excites and delivers benefits to our Jaguar customers around the world.
We race together and our partners bring their world-class capabilities to help us go faster and perform even better as a team. As you have heard and seen today, we now have one of the strongest driver lineups in Formula E. We have welcomed Sam into the Jaguar family and it is great to see him settling into the team already. Mitch, who is already an integral member of the Jaguar family and yet again in season 6, we saw what a world-class driver he is. One of the most dominant races in the history of the championship, Mitch Evans wins in Mexico City. And we cannot wait for more of his exhilarating driving in 2021. With Sam and Mitch, we have a powerful lineup and the team and drivers are hugely motivated for the season ahead. Finally, we also have our new Jaguar I-Type 5, our fastest ever challenger to take on the competition in Formula E. We have continued to innovate and push for performance and look forward to the I-Type 5 fighting for more points, podiums and wins. The competition is harder than ever and we look forward to the championship battles ahead. We thank all our fans, customers and wider Jaguar Land Rover family around the world for their passionate support. We will be giving it our best for you all. Well, Sam and Mitch, what's next for you guys? This weekend, we're going to be testing in Valencia. It's the official test days for Formula E before we kickstart the season in Santiago in January. Lots to do, lots of programs to get through, make sure that the, uh, the new car is robust, fast, uh, capable of lasting the race. Um, yeah, really excited. They always say, Mitch, you can't read anything into testing, but you'll still try, presumably. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, you can get a slight indication on, on, uh, on where you stack up. It's not totally fair because the track doesn't mean anything and, and people are doing random programs and, and whatever. But yeah, you, sh you do, do get a slight indication. Um, so hopefully we're towards the pointy ends. But if we're not, we won't panic. And uh, yeah, the real test is Santiago um, and, and Saudi to, to kickstart the, the season for us. Well, that's where the first points will be awarded. The first races of the season on the 16th and 17th of January in Santiago. And of course, you can stay up to date with everything that goes on here at Jaguar Racing across our social channels. We want to wish these guys and the rest of the team the very best of luck and we will see you in Santiago.